All right, how's it going, y'all? So Synology is unveiling a brand new product here, and that is Synology Active Protect. They've talked about it in a few of their different keynotes and stuff, and they are finally launching the products. These are entirely new NASes that are not running DSM or anything like that, but rather a new operating system that only does one thing, backup things. It is essentially a cross between Active Backup for Business and Synology C2's Cloud Backup, and it basically falls somewhere in the middle between those two things. So this is Synology's first real shot at enterprise users. This is the massive deployments that they're going for that is not something Synology's done at all. So this is a entirely new market they're going for rather than just purpose-built NAS units. They're now trying to build a system that is not only ultra scalable, but can integrate into a true enterprise environment. And it's going to be interesting to see once I get my hands on them, if I think they're going to be able to do that. I was worried when these were announced that they were going to be enterprise only and that Synology would basically just exclude out anybody but enterprise and just have a product for them and really kind of forget their roots and where they've really gotten a niche in the market. That is home users and small businesses who don't have a huge IT budget and just need something. And then from there, they've essentially been able to push up from there by proving themselves. I think Synology has done it very well with their business model because it allows people to actually prove that the system works. And then, hey, now I can do a bigger and bigger deployment rather than having to go to enterprises with this unknown company and try to sell it. So I was worried they were just going to try to piggyback off of their active backup for business experience and essentially build out a product that only enterprises could afford or would want to deploy. But I think they've actually handled it very well. They have handled it where no home users are gonna use it. I don't think many home users have a need for this, but I do think it's something that small and medium sized businesses will be able to deploy and not break the bank because of the way they've set up their licensing models. And I'm gonna be covering the licensing setup as well as is this the end of active backup for business in the second part of this video. But first I wanna talk about what is Active Protect. So Active Protect is a brand new suite of units that are purpose-built NASes, and they go all the way from 12 bay NAS units that have a ton of CPU cores behind them, all the way down to they have two bay models. Every single one of the units has a dedicated management interface, and they do not allow you to bring your own drives or anything like that. This is a major shift from previous Synology units, and I think everybody saw this coming. When you buy this unit, you buy them fully configured, drives, everything are stock. And the way they're configured is you can't even pick what drives you have. Each unit comes with a single configuration that has the drives in there, and that is what you're getting. These units are not configurable at all. You can't pick your drives, you can't bring your own drives, you can't even choose what size drives you would like in them. Each unit comes configured with a specified number of drives and SSD cache and size of drives. So this DP320 is going to have the exact same drives in it as every other DP320. Same thing with every single one of these units. They are not upgradable, they are not changeable. You get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. That is the setup for these units. These units are not set up for home tinkerers to be able to max out and figure out the best value to add, how much storage they can add. Everything is configured exactly as it's going to be for these units. So for example, these larger units have built in NVMe drives and SATA SSDs for caching, and they are just set up where you get no control over the backend. There are no settings to change in terms of your storage. They are all configured out exactly as they're going to be. I'm not even sure if you get the choice between RAID 5 and RAID 6. I think you might just get whatever is configured there and just a super basic, simple deployment, which I do think has its pros and cons. I think from Synology's perspective, it allows them to have a simpler licensing and just overall deployment model and be able to essentially scale out and send out machines that are appropriate for the right sizes. And I think it's very clear on this. Synology is doing this to make sure that they have the ability to segment their products. That is how the world works, and that is what they're doing here. They don't want somebody to go, hey, I can buy this for Bay, stick the new 24 terabyte drives in there, and now I've got the ability to have 70 terabytes of backup space and just go with it. Synology is trying to basically make sure that the people who are using the most space 
have to get the greatest unit. That is the setup for this. And while I do completely understand why they're doing it, and I'm not even necessarily mad about it, it is also one of the reasons why this is not going to be something I'm deploying for myself and my business. I'm just not the target market for this anyway, but stuff like that does make it hard for me to use for myself. Though I will say, I think Synology's target audience does not care. Synology is looking to set these things up for enterprise users who just want a simple deployment. I need to buy X numbers of units. They get shipped, they get plugged in and everything just works. I think that is why Synology is doing it like this is because that group just does not care. And the more you can simplify it down, the better. And I'm guessing that we, when we get licensed pricing, they are going to come in way, way, way cheaper than pretty much any other backup plans. And I think that's what Synology is banking on. Even if your hardware costs are pretty high the first year, the fact that it's going to be on your own hardware and you just have the cluster management license, I think is going to show within five years, it's going to beat out the pricing for pretty much any other cloud competitor. And I really think that's what Synology is banking on and why they're setting it up like this. Rather than have to share profits with Seagate if you go buy Iron Wolf drives and stick in your NAS, instead, you're buying a fully configured box from them where they're selling not only the unit, but also the drives. And so that is what Synology is really shooting for. And I'm pretty sure that their goal is just to make sure that it's still way more cost effective than a cloud backup option. So that is the basics. Currently, we have five different units, two desktop units, a two bay and a four bay. And then this unit right here, which I'm guessing is probably a management interface and not actually a drive unit. I'm guessing it's probably used to manage stuff rather than actually add storage though it could be, as well as two larger units right here that both have 12 hard drives in them and they're configured with 10 drives and then two SSD caches. So that is our lineup here. Every single one of these also has a dedicated management interface port. Once again, really making sure that it is a completely stock deployment because even this two bay unit has a separate management interface even though it only has two bays on it. These are all set up also to be clustered. So essentially you can have n number of units and you can define what level of protection you would like cross segment. So you can deploy these and just scale your entire system as required. And it's got a lot of things about deduplication, depending on where you want to deduplicate and other things like that, that should make it highly, highly scalable. I actually think that a lot of this technology and clustering came from what Synology did when they built C2 Backup, which I don't know anybody using. I think they said, hey, we just developed all this stuff for our own backup solution to basically backups as a service. Huh, nobody's really buying that, but we've got all this technology. Let's launch an entire ecosystem that allows people to deploy basically C2 Backup, but on their own hardware in their own units, because for enterprises, that's what they want. And so I think that's actually probably where a lot of this technology came from because they already had to do this to run C2 backup. And I don't think a lot of people are using it. All right, so that is the basics. We got these five units. They're really set up to be simple backup boxes that can do VMs, physical machines, MS365, Google Workspace, and other file servers. So pretty much anything that the active backup suite can currently do, these can as well but have the ability to cluster it out. So rather than managing each service and each active back of our business individually, they all are clustered out where you just add and remove units and they all get backed up automatically. So now that we've gone over what these units are and just their background as well as what's coming out, let's talk about the elephant in the room and that is licensing. So Synology has never had an annual license cost for physical hardware. The closest thing that they've ever had is if you wanted to do Active Insight, there is that per host license fee per year. But for things like Surveillance Station, which are somewhat similar to a licensing model here, all the licenses were perpetual. Not just perpetual, but perpetual following you around, not just the box. So if you have five Surveillance Station licenses and you get a new NAS, those migrate rather than having to buy new ones. This is now going to be an annual license fee for the software itself to run. And I was very worried about this and I still do not know what the price is, but they did something very smart in my opinion. 
they are giving you your first three licenses for free. So what that means is if you have three boxes, then you don't have to pay a license fee at all. Your first three Synology Active Protect licenses are free perpetually. And I think Synology did this very intentionally and very well because this bridges the gap between the enterprise and the small business quite well. Small businesses are not going to want to have another fee every year. They also do not need these crazy backend features that the enterprise clients do. And I would say any small business that has over three of these is not really a small business. So because of that, they get to allow smaller businesses and lower clients to just have the hardware costs associated with them, try them out, test them out, and not have to pay a recurring fee. But it does allow them to get that increased revenue from these massive corporations that are trying to sell them to. So I think that's a really great setup. And it's actually kind of similar to how Surveillance Station works. You get two free licenses per box. And then after that is when you have the licensing fees. That setup makes this system a lot easier for me to be able to recommend because it doesn't make you go and spend all this money every year for these smaller deployments. But it also means that they're getting that increased revenue from the enterprise clients who maybe are deploying 50 of these that can pay for really great stable features that enterprises need. I think it was done very well and very consciously. And the other thing that's nice about it and what they're really shooting for for the enterprise users is the fee is not associated with actual storage used or number of VMs or anything like that, but it is just associated with the actual physical boxes. And the reason they're able to do that is back to the beginning of this video when they don't let you configure the boxes themselves. This unit right here is only ever going to have two four terabyte drives in it. I think they're four terabyte drives, they might be eight. And through a bit of sleight of hand, they can say, oh, it's not per storage, it's just per unit, when the units are fixed storage anyway. And even though it is kind of by storage, it's not by VM. Most of these backup tasks are by VM, by core, by all of these different things, where this is basically, hey, you've got the hardware to do it. If you want to back up more often, that's going to be harder to do, and so you're going to need more units. But if you want to back up less often, then you can probably have more backup tasks. And it really lets you decide how your setup is. And so even though those license fees are based off of the host, the host has an exact amount of storage on it, it still does make it a little bit more cost effective and honestly a little bit more transparent with licensing fees rather than saying, hey, you've got to be able to pay five bucks per VM per year to back up. Here, it's very simple. You don't have to worry about how many hosts you're backing up or anything like that. Really, all you have to do is you just need to know how many units you have and then that says how much your license fee is going to be. I do not know what these license fees are. I'm assuming that the higher end units are going to cost more in license fees. I'm not really sure about that. I don't have any of these pricings yet. As soon as I know, I will probably be making a updated video or putting it in a pinned comment down below. So a lot of this is really coming down to one, obviously, how well does it work? And two, how expensive are these units? But to summarize that section, I think they handled the license fees very well, and they're really pushing the license fees on the people who care about them the least, the enterprise. Finally, what does this mean for active back of our business? Is active protect the writing on the wall for the end of active back of our business? And to be completely honest with you, I do not know what Synology is going to do. Synology could kill off active back for business tomorrow. But if I had to guess, I don't think they're going to mostly due to the fact that the selling point for the Active Protect ecosystem is to be able to be deployed massively. They're really shooting for, and especially if you look at the fact that the license fees are only once you have four or more boxes, they're really shooting for these enterprise deployments and that's where they're trying to get their value. Active Back of a Business is limited to just one single Synology. You would have to set up different backup tasks for Synology and once you need that much performance, maybe you can do the first one or two, but after that, it becomes so annoying to try to manage and you're going to lose stuff. That is the niche that Active Protect is really fighting against. So I do think that Active Back of Business and Active Protect are set up on different enough levels where I do think Synology could keep both of them alive and it probably would suit them well. When Active Backup for Business works really well, 
and a business grows, they are going to be way more likely to say, hey, we are really just reaching the performance limitations of our Synology. We're going to need many different servers. Let's look at Active Protect because Active Backup for Business is going so well. I could absolutely see that world going well. I could also absolutely see, hey, Active Protect is our own hardware and we make a lot more money on it. Let's kill off Active Backup for Business to force everybody to buy Active Protect clients, even if they're not going to use the clustering management software that would get them those extra license fees. So pretty much everybody who's currently using Active Backup for Business would be sent over to a tier that just has three hosts or less, if I had to guess. So it's not like they would make that money from the reoccurring license fees, but they still would be making money from the hardware sales. If I had to guess, I think Active Protect is going to get a lot more of the features and really be the focus on it and going to be much more stable. But I do think Active Backup for Business will probably be around. I do not have the ability to see the future, but just from a marketing and really Synology's trajectory when it comes to how can we make money and how can we get businesses to use our boxes, they tend to like having a, hey, let's just go up, up, up and up to prove themselves to their real end goal, and that is enterprise clients. So only in the next few years will tell us that, but I could see it going either way, and I'm hoping they keep Active Backup for Business around to try to get people into the Active Protect ecosystem eventually. All right, well, that is going to be it for this. I do not yet have final pricing and I do not have any of these units. I'm hoping Synology will send me over a few and I can really test them on out, but stay tuned for that. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.